Hello there, my dear friend. Mm, effervescent and refreshingly cold to the taste buds. But not about that, specifically not about that, but about something interesting. Join me, watch a movie. Today we'll discuss fertilizing our aquarium with carbon dioxide, specifically. And I have, listen up, some really cool news. Aquat, our Polish company, has the capability to do it. Pay attention. This set is referred to as the soda system, and it is designed to fit the bottles from the soda stream system, allowing you to make your own carbonated drinks. Why produce additional new carbon dioxide? How can we make use of the carbon dioxide that has already been produced? Why bother making some moonshine, messing around with some lemon acids and mixing it all together once it blew up on the desk for me? Quick response, huh? You know, producing that carbon dioxide from some mud, like here we have a ready solution and it's very interesting financially because if you go to such a popular auction portal, you can buy an original soda stream bottle there, you can buy some substitute. These bottles have a capacity of 425 grams. 35G maximum capacity, carbon dioxide, and you do not have to like fly around some fire brigades to refill a large tank because not everyone has the opportunity. My friend, for example, lives in the UK and he has this perpetual problem of refilling a large gas cylinder. But I suspect that if he goes to an electronics store in any smaller town here, they probably also calmly take an empty cylinder there. Well, that's just a whole, um, this one is probably empty. She takes such a bottle, gives it, pays around, I don't know, in such an electronic store, it costs about 40 PLN. She pays for just the exchange, returns the empty one, gets a full one. And on our auction portal, you can fill such a bottle for about eight, nine PLN. You can buy a replacement filled for about 30 something PLN. And such a bottle should last us for a long time. Simple, easy, and enjoyable. You simply take it out of the system. If you have one at home, if you do not have one, then you have the option of using a bowl and filling it up with gas, but not with a drink. Instead, with our aquarium that is specifically designed for this purpose. So I invite you to the unboxing. We'll see how it looks, what's on the box, what's in the box, how it connects, how it works, and how long it lasts. And here we have all the elements of the Aqua Art Soda system set. Good, thick, strong CO2 hoses, a suction cup for the window, but this one happens to be glass. I need an acrylic one too, because I would have two glass ones right away. The most important thing in the set, which is the CO2 reducer, is crucial. CO2 reducer soda system, pressure gauge, quick connector for bubble cap, precision valve and preliminary valve. So we install the preliminary valve and then adjust it to the desired amount of carbon dioxide we want to serve there. Here is something in English regarding two valves, the quick installation of 6 mm and something I do not understand because it is in English. In this case, the barcode is most likely indicating the manufacturer's website. In this instance, we have a CO2 reducer designed for the soda system known as Aqua Art. And here we have what? This reducer is specifically designed to fit the soda system and features a standard connector with the model number TR214. This is precisely, pay attention, that specific blue bottle. 
This is the correct size for this particular window in our house. Here is the original version, and I also possess a counterfeit version with the identical thread design and characteristics. Pay attention. As I mentioned earlier, the bottle has a total of 425 grams of carbon dioxide, which is an important detail to remember. And let's take a closer look at this reducer in a moment. Quite adorable, it has a rating of 2000 PSI, a quick connector, a precise little valve, operates very smoothly and is quite heavy. And here is the second preliminary valve. You simply press it in this location, seal it, and then securely screw it onto the bottle. We will leave it in this location. It is fancy, nicely made, and possesses its own unique charm that sets it apart from others. Another component of the collection is an acrylic carbon dioxide diffuser. It appears to be constructed from ceramic, but it is not. He's made of ceramic fibers. I'll tell you right now how this differs from regular baking. Instructions on where to put it. Aquarium. Item. This. Listen, what's this? Acrylic diffuser with a spike made of ceramic fiber. It should not be mistaken for a spike made of ceramic material. Listen, I'll read it because I don't have a good memory, you know. You have to fire the ceramic mass and then small channels form. That's how you make a regular ceramic glaze. The fiber sintering process is done by subjecting the ceramic mass to a high electromagnetic impulse, which then forms the fibers. Afterwards, they are sintered, then molded into a compact under high pressure, and finally annealed again. Thanks to this treatment, micropores are created with a much smaller diameter and a much larger quantity than in regular sintering. Speak with fiber is not just significantly denser, but also harder and more durable than regular. Please do not crack. Okay, let us check it out. We will simply observe how the wind blows and assess the situation. They should be extremely turbo small, micro bubbles. An extremely important thing, they even wrote on the packaging, before the first use, place it in water for 24 hours. That is why I have two, and one of them has been wet since yesterday, starting from the previous day. Every single detail needs to be in Picobello tip-top condition. Oh, so how does he look now? Zanik, no hurry. Art exhibition showcasing acrylic paintings. I am currently in the process of looking. I am currently in the process of looking. No, it is white, is it not? White, and that's all there is. Seasons are seasons. They are extremely tiny that I don't even have glasses, so I cannot see. We will see how he blows in the aquarium and assess the situation accordingly. Please pay attention, I have another item to mention. It is called a CO2 bubble counter, which is used to count bubbles. You can easily and quickly connect it to six millimeter turbo pneumatic hoses for seamless operation and accurate measurement of CO2 levels in your system. Polish company, and there's not much in Polish except for the fact that there's a CO2 bubble counter here. CO2 bubble counter, here is. This is the item. Fantastic. And look, it won't work out. I'll press it and leave. I press and click and it perishes. Oh, because he possesses such a cool tooth. Just some ordinary snakes. Like it listened to small snakes, you know. Check valve. The water won't back down on us. So two and one. Where do you pour water here? Here. So we will proceed in this manner because the bubbles will ascend upwards. But there is a small hiccup. These are aluminum caps. 
Is it made out of plastic or glass? Does it have no sound? I will let you know, I am uncertain. However, upon observation, it is evident that the object possesses a substantial and robust thickness. And another thing, electric shock, shock from electricity. I mean, because I speak Polish like that, and suddenly in the middle, hmm, fancy. Oh, wow, that is truly amazing. The concept of CO2 fertilization for aquatic plants is fascinating. Fish tank. 17 milliampers, ingress protection, 65, 230 volts, feeding season, input power, 230 volts, operating current, 17 milliampers, IP rating, 65, feeding period. It's great that it's displayed here because it always delves into the specifics in your mind. And if we possess a bottle and we possess a reducer in this location, we simply place it on the hose, just on a snake. He does not allow us to pass. And here we encounter a person who appears to be some sort of programmer. We give CO2, plants produce O2. And here we have nicely drawn what the CO2 system consists of. A folder for the piggy, a thick cable, no one spared here, there's no way around it. What was the direction? I forgot. So following that, we arrange for ourselves a lively and energetic electric party at a yet-to-be-disclosed location where we can gather, celebrate, and have a great time filled with music, dancing, and joyous moments. Here it is documented. We enter, we exit. All right, so let's construct our set of items and proceed with the building process. Now, installation. Look, kids. We don't use any tools. There ain't no damn screws, monkey wrenches, and other miracles here. We simply seize it, document it, and at this very instant, direct our gaze towards the visual representation that has been captured on film in order to observe and analyze the results that have been obtained. What's up? We are under pressure. That is the end. All set. We are equipping ourselves with a tool to accurately count bubbles. Let us connect the solenoid. Second, we possess a small snake. Let's proceed with hooking it up, making sure it works well, and then move on to the next task. This is a perspective from up here. Got it. Secondly, I am here. I have successfully obtained it. There is another snake. It is now heading towards the fish tank to join the other aquatic creatures in their watery home. At this point, we establish a connection. What is currently happening or of interest in this situation? That is it. Piece of cake. Oh, sure. Before I even turn on the gas, we fill up the bubble counter with water to ensure accurate measurement of gas flow. Here, I'll show you the initial adjustment with this valve. Check it out. The logo is so that you can read it perfectly with this. We press the button and then the object starts to spin. As we observe, it is gradually transitioning to an almost vertical position. And it is upside down, which means the initial adjustment of the amount of carbon dioxide that is delivered. Competition lacks such a feature. An additional tip to keep in mind is to listen up carefully, as it can be configured in this way, referring to the classic countdown timer. However, if you disconnect this quick connector, as I like to refer to it, there are no limitations stopping you from, for example, attaching an electric valve in this particular area. Oh, and placing the bubble counter in a different location altogether. So many possibilities, dude, to each their own. Here you go, the bubbles are here. We have the capability to turn it up, raising the volume to a higher level than before, amplifying the sound and making it louder than it currently is. Here you go. The bottle has been connected and is now ready for use. Thank you for your patience. Real champagne found in the aquarium environment. It blows really cool. It's simple, mate. You got your gas cylinder, regulator, bubble counter, solenoid valve, diffuser, and a fizzy drink cylinder. It couldn't have been any easier. And overall, it's really cool because you can put it in a small cabinet, use it for a small aquarium.
As always, the comments section is at your disposal. I'll just check how far it goes and use this set in my new project. In a plant-filled aquarium. And below this video, I will leave a comment stating that a rate of 3 bubbles per second was sufficient as it had been for numerous days. Done for today. Stay warm, y'all. Hey there.